Hello guys, today I want to show you what are different methods and ways how to deal with foreign keys when deleting the parent records. So in this example we have a list of users and every user may create a book in this database and what happens if you delete a user and there are books related to that user? What are the options how to create that foreign key or should you create a foreign key? And what are the errors if you don't do that and how to handle those errors? Everything is in this video. So imagine a scenario, you have a database migration and you have a field books user ID, but you don't create a foreign key. So this is our first situation. So if we migrate the database in this way, in the database we have books table and let's try to delete a user that has a book. So 15 user ID, for example, our table is here and let's find user ID 15, this one. What happens with the book when you delete the user 15? There is no error, user is deleted, and then that book is still here with user ID 15, which doesn't exist. So to prevent that from happening, you need to create foreign keys on the database level, and that migration line can help you with that. You can do table foreign like this, or foreign ID is a shorter way that came from Laravel 7. Situation number two, so we created that foreign key, and we'll try to delete that user, and it will fail, and I will show you why. So I have re-migrated the database with the foreign key this time and the book with user ID 10. Let's go to user list and try to find user ID 10, this one. We click delete and we will see the error. This is what foreign key does. It throws an error whenever you're trying to delete the parent record. So it throws an error on SQL level. And depending on your settings of your logs, user would see in the browser this error probably for local or staging server and on production server if you turn the logging off which you should do generally the page server error would be thrown like 500 error or something and it is okay this is how it's supposed to work it's supposed to restrict user from deleting something that should not be deleted but how to handle that more gracefully so that the visitor on the web would see something like exception in a more human friendly way there are a few ways if we go back to the users table, in the code of index blade we show the form but we may add the condition, show that button only if there are no related records. So in the user controller we should load user with books if there is a relationship of has many with books or actually even with count books because we don't need all the books. So with count of books we load all the users. In the model we do have user books has many, which is great. And now in the index we should do if user books count more than zero, then we show that button. Or in fact, if it is zero, we show that button. So if count is zero, let's refresh the page. Refresh the page and only on some of the users we see delete button because there are no books created by that user. But of course, it's only front end thing and someone could still post the destroy method from the browser or from the API client like Postman. So we should validate it on the back end as well. So in user controller in the destroy method, we have this and then we can do if user books count, same thing, user with count books something like this if user books count is zero then we return redirect back with some error so return redirect route admin users index with success it should be actually a different variable but for simplicity let's try to throw error here user has books something like that and of course the condition should be bigger than zero so let's return those links from the front end refresh the page and let's try to delete this user as you can see our user has books so this is a better way or you can use for example try catch here so not just user books count but load the user and do try user delete catch any exception return redirect back with error user has books or any general error something went wrong not that informative but maybe there's a different exception not just by books amount let's try that delete error something went wrong and if we delete the user that doesn't have books successfully delete the user 
So it's your choice whether to use if or try catch. But also let's talk about scenario where you do want to delete the books with the user. So you want to allow to delete the user and delete the books with them. This is done on the database level. So when creating foreign key, you can provide two different options. What to do with the books if the user is deleted. And there are two syntax ways. Cascade on delete, like this, which means that it will delete all the books by that user. Or different option is null on delete, like this, which means that every book's user ID would be set to null. Let's try cascade on delete and I will show you how it works. Cascade on delete, remigrate the database. Okay, and I have a book, for example, with user ID 7. And if we find the user ID 7 here in the list, so this one, look what happens if I delete that. Successfully deleted the user. And if we refresh the user's table, that book with 21 ID, it is gone. It is deleted along with the user and there's no user ID 7 as well. So if you are doing cascade on delete, it deletes all the children records. I probably wouldn't advise you to do that because you never know what the children records contain and maybe it contains important data for the future. And speaking of that, another way how to deal with all of that is use eloquent function called soft deletes. So instead of physically deleting the records from the database, it should be deleted at present in the table and just sets that timestamp. And I will not go deeper into that in this video because I have an article on our quick admin panel blog, how to deal with soft deletes if you're deleting the parent. Restrict or cascade, you can use specific package to cascade soft deletes because it's not supported by default in Eloquent. So all of that is in this article and you can check out our quick admin panel Laravel generator for admin panels as a thank you note after reading this article. Or you can support this channel as well by checking out my courses on Teachable, 14 courses at the moment, or my Livewire kit set of components. And when you purchase any of those, you support this YouTube channel and I can continue shooting videos daily for you. See you guys in other videos.